Hi everyone and welcome. It's Christine here and I am here today to share a Marie Antoinette junk journal that I just finished creating. This um, journal was definitely a work of love. I uh, majored in history in college many, 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 many eons ago. And so history has always held a really special place in my heart. And when I started making these junk journals, I loved looking into historical images and finding historical quotes and learning th everything I can about a certain historical time period. So this time it's time to do Marie Antoinette. So I decided to make a journal series out of this theme. Now, today I'm only showing my first journal that I have made because it, because it is by far the most complex of the journals that I will have available. This one will not be available for sale. It was going to be, but my sweet husband um, decided that after he saw it, he really wanted us to keep it. So, um, but no worries. If you're into Marie Antoinette and would like to buy a junk journal, I have three more large ones coming and two small boho pocket-sized um, journals coming. If you would like to see uh, a peek, here's one of the covers that will be for sale um, of the of the of the three that will be for sale. There's one. And here is the second one. Okay, that fun applique on the side. And then um, whoa, just totally knocked something over. Sorry about that guys for the noise. And then this is the third one. Okay, so those will all be available uh, very soon, and I will do a video walkthrough of each of them. But for now, I'm going to be showing you this one, which again is far more complex. It's more like a historical reference book almost that I have put together here. It's full of images from Mrs. Cog's Crafts, um, other images that I have gathered, historical quotes, historical etchings in black and white that I printed and then tea dyed. And it's just a really, really, really fun project. So hopefully you history lovers will love it. And uh, those of you who love junk journaling, hopefully we'll find some sort of inspiration as we walk through this as well. I want to apologize up front. This will probably be a fairly lengthy video just because this is a very large album and will probably take me um, quite a bit of time to flip through it all but I'll go as fast as I can. This is a little mini album that comes with it and I will get into this in just a little bit so I'm going to set that to the side for a moment. Here is the album. All of these are soft covered albums and they have some thick upholstery fabric covering them and then each has images, some appliques, beautiful fabrics, beautiful dangles. Here's what is dangling out of the bottom of this beautiful journal. Here is the side, and I will show you after I untie the bow as well. I did do a little um, tassel for the spine that is removable. And so there's some laces, some sari silks, and this beautiful pendant here that I have made. I'm going to go ahead and take this removable tassel off just for the ease of being able to more easily show you the journal. So that is the spine, and then this is the back, very plain on the back. And again, here's those beautiful beaded dangles that go all the way around the outside of the album. All right, so let's go ahead and I will untie, oops, untie the Sorry Silk Closure. And then we'll go ahead and peek on the side and the top so you can see close-ups of some of the beads, the fabrics and laces and such. And then I'll sit down and we'll go through it. So this is what the side looks like. And I promise there's paper in there. I really went um, overboard with all the beautiful textiles, but as you can see, it still doesn't alligator mouth on me. So I was able to keep it uh, manageable, even though it has tons of beautiful drippings coming out of the side. I just lost a paper clip. We'll put that back on as we uh, go through the journal. All right, so here is just some, some charms and some beadwork that I just want to quickly show you. We'll see them again when we go through the album itself, but it's a little easier to see them up close sometimes. This is a gorgeous Marie Antoinette bead charm there that I got from Etsy. Sorry, silk does shed. I tried to peel all the floofies off, but some of them still remain. Here's a little pretty diamond um, um, charm there. And then here's another beautiful pink jeweled charm here. Can you guys see that? And then of course at the top we have tabs uh, made from sari silk, the Lurex sari silk with the beautiful gold stitching in it and also just some muslin. And then mixed in between are a few little beads there as you can see on paper clips. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this journal. 
Um, these measure uh, nine by five with a two and a half inch spine. This one has. The others have two and a quarter inch spine that will be for sale. Again, this one is not. I'm going to keep this one, but the others will be similar, just not quite as complex. So here we go, first opening up the inside of the journal here. Um, and I don't think I can really zoom you guys in any further because it is so big, but let me just try to do a little tiny bump there. Okay. So um, as you can see here, here's the inside of the front cover and I've just placed some graphic 45 paper there. And then some images, of course. This beautiful applique here is from Sheila Gingrich. And then I've just made it a little pocket and I just stuck a little postcard in there, Marie Antoinette. Um, each image throughout the entirety of the book, um, as well as any images that might be on um, tea dyed index cards or anything like that in the pockets, all of them are labeled. So to explain what I mean, if I pull this little index card out, um, you can see I've tea dyed it. All the index cards are tea dyed. I've done some stamping. Most of my stamps are from Graphic 45. Some are from um, Stampin' Up. And then on the other side, as you can see here, I have actually the name of the portrait, the date that it was painted, if known, and the, <clears throat> pardon me, my voice is all screwy today, um, got some allergies going on, and then um, the painter who did it. And so, and I made little tuck spots out of a lot of these and just placed little tea dyed tags in there. So I thought that was a really fun extra little component to add um, so that, you know, anyone that's really into history would know when these were painted and who painted them. So um, you'll find those in all of the pockets and then on the main pages of each signature, and this journal has four signatures, by the way, I've just sewed the label right onto the page. All pages um, in this journal are tea dyed, which means that I have dunked them in tea, I have heated them, or baked them in the oven rather, and then ironed them with a with an iron. So um, everything that you see here, aside from the images themselves, uh, has been tea dyed. The tags, the flashcards, the um, index cards, and the paper have all been tea dyed. All right, so let's keep get going here. So I sort of did a, this a little bit chronologically, starting with um, her as a young girl and then moving on to when she becomes the Dauphin of France, um, or Dauphine, uh, and then of course uh, leading up to her demise. This is a portrait right here of Marie Antoinette with, the royal, with her royal family. She came from the Habsburgs, the Habsburg Empire. Her father was the Emperor, the Holy Roman Emperor, and um, her mother was Marie Therese, who was uh, um, absolutely an amazing leader, but didn't have as much time for her daughters, especially Marie Antoinette, who was her youngest of 11 <laughs> uh, daughters. So children, actually, um, there was one boy that I believe came after her, but I think that he died young. So I think she was really the youngest. Um, and then this here is a close up of this portrait here. So Marie's standing in the back here as a very young child. And then this is just a close up of that. So you can see her gorgeous dress and, um, all the details on her dress. Here's some design paper that I've just tea dyed. As you can see, lots of room for journaling, lots of side fabrics and tabs and lots of drippies hanging out the bottom. I probably won't, won't point them all out because you know you guys can see them, but um, you know, they're there. All right, here's a little pocket with a tea dyed index card with a stamp that just says if the crown fits. I also did some stenciling with some Tim Holtz Distress Ink here. Um, and again, all of the quotes that are in the journals are um, historically accurate. They really happened. Um, I read tons of books to prepare for uh, creating this journal, so I made sure that everything is historically accurate. Um, and again, I also mentioned there's some tea dyed pages with some black and white etchings and images on them as well. And uh, they came out beautifully. I was really happy with how that came out. This is one of my favorite portraits. And this actually was not done contemporaneously with when Marie Antoinette was living. This was done in the 1800s. It's still public domain now, but it just wasn't done in her lifetime. But it's an imagining of her um, with her French tutor that came once it was decided that she was going to become uh, the Dauphine and then uh, eventually the Queen of France. France, she had to she had to learn real quick she was as like as I said she was the youngest daughter of 11 children and so she was not really it was not thought by her parents that she was going to be making an important marital match 
Of course she would marry well being a Habsburg princess, but it wasn't believed that she would, you know, be first in line to be a king or, or excuse me, a queen of a, um, you know, a rich nation like France. But because of so many different events that happened, Marie Antoinette's life was irrevocably changed um, and of course ultimately led to her her demise which is which is a very sad sad story but anyway once it was determined because of all of these events that I won't get into because it's a lot of stuff <laughs> um, but because of these events she did um, you know become the intended for the prince of France who they, which they call the Dauphin and so she had to learn quickly um, various subjects she had been tutored as a young girl but the tutor was very lenient with her did not mandate um you know perfection or anything like that because again it wasn't expected that she was going to make an important super important match um so she her schooling was sort of left to the wayside she was allowed to kind of do whatever she wanted to do um, and she wasn't really taught discipline and how to really you know work through things and think through things and things like that so she had to learn real quick so that's what this portrait is depicting and then i just have a tea dyed postcard in there and of course on the back as with all of the paintings is the name of the painting and the author or the, not the author the painter <laughs> here's a beautiful image of her as a young girl and she is playing the clavichord which looks like a piano to me but um apparently it's called something else all right a little blue lace pocket here with again a stamped index card with a graphic 45 stamp on the front and then bl blank on the back so you can do some journaling here's a graphic 45 um, um, journaling card here from their gilded lily set which is perfect for this theme of course here's a quote from Marie Antoinette it says I put on my rouge and wash my hands in front of the whole world and this was she said this on July 12th 1770 um, and this was about her daily routine once she got to Versailles and became the Dauphine which means the princess um, and Louis XV was still on the throne and so she and Louis XVI her now husband were the prince and princess of France and so um, they were expected to follow all of the traditional French court rules and part of that included uh, every morning getting up and having certain people who were very important uh, come in and watch you dress watch you uh, wash your face put on your makeup do your hair and this would take hours and as we'll see as we go through the the book um, some of Marie Antoinette's hairstyles you can probably imagine how just how long it would take a hairstylist to create those magnificent hairstyles and so these people would just be watching her forever and Marie Antoinette did not like that at all so she put up with it for a while but eventually she was like no more I'm, I'm not doing this anymore and she wanted privacy she wanted privacy for herself and for her husband and then later on in life for her children and so um, that's when she built some extra property uh, or some an extra structure on Versailles land uh, a little palace for herself and her closest friends and her children and it was really just to sort of escape that constant gaze of the entire aristocracy within Versailles of course it wasn't looked at fondly because it was different and people don't like change and so um, that was part of what started to give her a bad reputation people thought she must be doing something obscene there she must be whoops she must be uh, engaging in something horrible you know who knows but lots of different rumors were flying about her um, and it just all was really un unwarranted but at the time I mean it really did a lot to help bring her down um, in stature but anyway so I bet you guys didn't think you were getting a history lesson with this video. I'm so sorry. I'll try to go a little faster now. Um, so anyway, these are just uh, some little tea dyed index cards with some tags, some journaling space, and of course the um, the labels on the, the particular paintings. But all of these are her as a young girl. Here is the center of the first signature, which is that signature page from the Gilded Lily Graphic 45 set of paper. And then we have some Sorry Silk over here and some more little portraits of her as a young girl um, again just some black and white etchings this is a common ball uh, scene at Versailles when she would have been there this is her and the prince before they became king and queen this was Marie before she left for France doing a ballet with her sisters and her one of her brothers there 
and um, she was incredibly graceful. She was known for her beauty and her grace. And this is one of the portraits people point to, or one of the paintings rather, that people point to in indicating that. You can see her long neck here, how she's holding her shoulders and her neck high. And that was, you know, apparently very, um, a very uh, impressive quality to have in that time period. And so that was kind of another thing that bumped her up when other historical facts happened that made her older sisters no longer viable to become, you know, Princess of France. So we'll just keep flipping here. Just some more portraits of her when she's younger. Some beautiful lace here on the side. This is... Um, uh, Marie Antoinette is on the left in the pink dress and Maria Carolina is in the blue dress. Maria Carolina was her closest sister. They were closest in age. I believe they were three years apart and um, really were kind of best friends growing up. And so uh, it was very sad when, when they had to leave each other once they were, it was time for them to go get married because they were very, very close indeed. All right, so here's the end of the first signature. And I have a quote here at the bottom from Marie Antoinette's mother, Maria Therese, Teresa, which says, Farewell, my dearest child. A great distance will separate us. Do so much good to the French people that they can say that I have sent them an angel. Of course, we all know how Marie Antoinette's story ends, um, and it was not pleasant, but her mother certainly had high hopes for her uh, when she left. All right, here's the beginning of the second signature, and this is Marie Antoinette in, in her coronation robes, and she's holding the crown there. Here is a portrait of Marie with her husband, Louis XVI, the king. And then this is Marie Antoinette's brother that actually came for a visit. Here's a portrait of Marie Antoinette getting ready. You can start to see the, the poofy hairstyle that's starting to, to be, you know, become all the rage in France. And then we just have some really pretty appliques. Here's a quote from Virgil, um, who is quoted by Horace Walpole about Marie Antoinette, and it's in Latin. And then the translation of it is, by her gate she revealed that she was in truth a goddess. And that just is further talking about what I mentioned earlier, about her having this beautiful um, gait and the beautiful way, the elongated neck and the beautiful way she held her head and that sort of thing. So here she is practicing the harp. She was very musical, and in fact, when she was still at home before leaving for France, um, Mozart visited and did a little concert for her and her family. So um, she was very, very musical, and she loved music. She patronized a lot of musicians at the time and uh, also played some, some instruments herself. So um, here's just another little postcard with a painting there trying not to go through everything because otherwise this video would be forever long here's a charm of a feather Can you guys see that there and I paired that with this page because the quote is she says this is a direct quote from Marie Antoinette she says it is true I am rather taken up with dress but as to feathers everyone wears them and it would seem extraordinary if I did not and that's why she has lots of feathers on her uh, in many of her portraits. Um, here she is with um, her children. This is called the Royal Family, and it's um, some family members of the kings as well as, here's Marie Antoinette, and she is holding um, the Dauphin, which is the, the, the new prince of France, so her first son, who um, actually ended up passing away at a fairly early age. And then that is her first child, which was a daughter. And she said of her daughter, which again was the first child, of course, there was a lot of pressure in those times to ha produce male heirs. It's the, in France, the um, succession went to the oldest male heir. And uh, so there was a lot of pressure for, for queens to bear the king a son. And so their first child was a girl. And Marie Antoinette said of the little girl, she said, poor little girl, you are not what was desired, but you are nevertheless dear to me on that account. A boy would have become the property of the state. You shall be mine. And she named her first daughter, Marie Therese Charlotte. And she was born in 1778. And she is the only child of Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI that actually survived into um, adulthood. I believe she was in her 60s when she died. So... Another beautiful um, um, journaling card there from Graphic 45. I just have some beaded paper clip holding it in. Here is Marie Antoinette with the globe. This is a very famous portrait of her on the cover of many uh, books. Um, 
And then here's just a little index card in this little tuck spot here. And this is just a French fashion plate that was done in 1774. And uh, Marie Antoinette was certainly, as queen, she was the style guru. So she was, her styles, her fashions were copied by all of the aristocracy, put in publications, etc. So it was a really big deal um, at the time. It was a very big part of the French culture, obviously for the aristocracy. Now the, the, the poor people, the peasants, the working class, not so much, obviously, but for uh, the upper class, that was very important. Another uh, the quote she said about her daughter was, You shall be mine, you shall have my undivided care, you will share my happiness, and you will alleviate my sufferings. And by all accounts, historically, Marie Antoinette was an amazing mother to her children. Um, she just loved being a mother and was very good at it. Here is a beautiful um, portrait that was done of Marie Antoinette, and it was done by a female painter. And the female painter's name was Elizabeth Louis Vizy Lebrun. I'm sure I butchered that. She was a obviously a French lady, and she started doing many of Marie Antoinette's um, portraits, and um, was almost uh, not not literally, but it was talked about potentially beheading her at the end of all of this when the French Revolution happened. But she survived the guillotine. She didn't go to the guillotine or anything, and. Um, she is quite a talented painter and she's a fascinating character all on her own i'm reading a book about her now um she's just absolutely fascinating but anyway this is the uh, beautiful portrait that she did and i just did some close-ups on the right page so you could just see the intricacies of that dress look at that dress isn't it absolutely gorgeous and then we have this beautiful gold trim at the top there and so we'll keep going now just more room to journal, lots of room to journal. Here's a tea dyed index card and I just did a stamp from Graphic 45 on there. This is Marie, Marie Antoinette loved to go writing and that was also not really something that queens were supposed to do that much at Versailles, it was just not, especially when she was young and a princess and she did it anyway. <laughs> um, but this was actually her mother's favorite portrait and her mother kept this portrait um, close to her her whole life. little tuck spot here and I just stuck a little postcard and ticket into and then some beadwork here at the bottom that I've just attached with a safety pin here she is having her Dauphin the uh, the prince finally her second child was a son and so that was very exciting and um, the king actually was was thrilled obviously this is a portrait of King Louis the 16th tea dyed index card in the tuck spot there. <laughs> I love this quote from Marie Antoinette. My tastes are not those of the king who has none except for hunting and mechanics labor. They really initially were not a very good match. Not that they didn't get along, they just did not have much in common. Louis was very um, shy, I guess you could say, very introverted. Um, very interested in simple what one might call simple things i'm not saying that in a derogatory way because they're the same things i'm interested in i very much <laughs> am an introvert love to read do things like that and that was him and marie antoinette was much more outgoing she loved to socialize she loved to play card games at versailles she loved to be out and about in her little garden she loved to um just be in nature and that sort of thing so they really did not have a whole lot in common but they ended up really learning to love, maybe not in a traditional man and wife way as we might understand it and behave today, but they certainly had a lovely relationship. They respected each other. They loved each other in their own way. And they were, which is what I'm about to say, you wouldn't know from what happened to them in history, but they actually very much cared about their people, uh, particularly, the, particularly those less fortunate. They did a lot of charity work um, for the poor. It just, you know, it, it didn't make the quote unquote news, if you will, back in the seven, late 1700s. And, um, you know, Louis wasn't the best manager of France and money was going everywhere. And so it seemed as though they were running the country into the ground because the poor were so poor uh, with no end to that in sight. And that was sort of the, the brewing of what became the French Revolution and the overthrow of the monarchy and the execution of the king and Marie Antoinette. Um, but it truly wasn't all their fault. The um, 
King Louis the Fifteenth, the king before Louis the Sixteenth and Marie Antoinette, was a spendthrift, and so much of the coffers of the palace were gone by the time Louis the Sixteenth took over. So, um, just a very unfortunate situation. But they they really did care about um, you know their their, their people. Um, their Marie Antoinette is often quoted as saying, "Let them eat cake." And that was in reference to the, the lack of, of bread, the people being so poor, bread supply dwindling. And she allegedly said, well, then let them eat cake, which was meant to show first her apathy and second her complete lack of understanding and knowledge and simple care of the people. But I promise you, based on all of the texts that I have read, she never said that. Um, so that quote will not show up in this journal. Um, she did not say, let them eat cake. That is not something that, if a queen said that, the best guess is that it was stated by Louis XIV, who, who created Versailles' wife. Uh, but that was not said by Marie Antoinette and would have been completely out of her character. Um, so she, she definitely did not say that. Um, what she did say was that it was up to them to take care of her and the king, to take care of those less fortunate, and that she believed that the king understood that as well. And I think that's what really made the king and queen come together, even though they might not have been the most romantic match, they certainly were a match in terms of um, their, their wish to do good for their country. All right, here's a little crown charm there. And oh my gosh, I've been talking your ear off. I'll try to stop. Here's some beautiful portraits. Some beautiful lace here. And I just sewed a little pink button on there. Lots of room to journal. And then here we are at the end of the second signature. Here's the beginning of the third signature. This was a famous painting done, again, by Elizabeth Lebrun, who was a fantastic female uh, portrait artist of the time. And um, this was called Marie Antoinette in a Muslin Dress. And the people, when they saw it, had a fit they thought that this the aristocracy felt that this muslin dress was simply not appropriate for a queen that she should be always decked out like she is here and so this is part of how she got such a bad name she did things differently she didn't dress in front of everybody anymore she didn't hold court at versailles all the time anymore she preferred the silence and the quietness of her own little retreat that was still on versailles property with her kids and her closest friends and confidants and she didn't want to be decked out all the time in all these fancy jewels she wanted to be able to dress more simply and uh, the aristocracy didn't like that so um, just one of many factors that led to her downfall and it's so sad but anyway um, we'll keep going this was a portrait that again Elizabeth Lebrun did of the Queen with her three surviving children at the time she had a baby so she had her her daughter then she had her son then she had another son and then the her last child was a little daughter Princess Sophie and she died at 11 months old and so this child here which is her second or her first son who died at the age of 10 is pointing to the empty bassinet so that that child that baby that recently died when this was painted was remembered um and marie antoinette commissioned this painting because she was starting to get such a bad rep with the people um they felt that she was just spending money and spending money on her you know fabulous gowns and her little property uh, which wasn't so little on Versailles that was built just for her and uh, you know the people knew about this and they heard about it and they were really angry and um, she got the nickname Madame Deficit because they felt that she was the one running the country into the ground which while yes she was used to nice things and probably could have done better in that regard it certainly was not her fault um, or at least not all her fault and the, the, the subsequent things that happened to her are just um, unwarranted, I think, and unfair. Here's that charm that I showed you at the beginning of the video of Marie Antoinette that I found on Etsy. Here's just a little, another little portrait of her that I've sewn to a tea dye note card. And then here's just some little flashcards in this little tuck spot here. Of course, the little flashcards have keywords that have to do with the time period, what was going on, and Marie Antoinette herself. Here's just some design paper that I tea dyed, and I did some sorry silk through it, and then just did some wooden beads at the bottom, and it hangs out of the bottom of the of the book. A little pocket here made from this beautiful lace, 
and a tea dyed index card there. Another portrait. There's some more paper from the Gilded Lily Graphic 45 set. I love this trim here. So because the portrait of her that was at the beginning of this signature was so not well received because they didn't feel that this dress was becoming of a queen, uh, Elizabeth Lebrun painted it again with this dress, <laughs> which is a blue grayish colored dress. So here we are in the center of the uh, second signature. Oh, I'm sorry, the third signature. This portrait up here is Madame Royale, which is what they called the, um, the oldest daughter of the king and queen. And um, then that's Louis Joseph, who was the Dauphin of France, who died at the age of 10, making her second child the Dauphin. We'll get to that in just a minute. So here I have made, this actually has two separate journal, mini journals within it. So this, I wanted to do a tiny little mini journal of Elizabeth uh, Lebrun, the painter. She has um, lots of self-portraits and things. I just put a couple things in here, um, but this is her self-portrait of the, the painter. I did some stamping in this as well as some stenciling. These are all tea dyed pages. This is her with her palette. I really loved this painting, so I had to put it in. And then this painting on the left was not done at the time period, during the time period, but it was done, um, it's still, it was done in 1854, so it's still, it's in the public domain. And what it is, is it's depicting a historical um, event, which actually happened. Um, now, I say historical, I don't mean necessarily that it had, you know, historical um, relevance or anything like that. But, it, uh, but, but by saying historical, what I mean is that it, this actually happened. So, um, as I said, Elizabeth painted many of Marie Antoinette's portraits. So she was at Versailles quite often painting Marie Antoinette. And one time when she came, Elizabeth happened to be very pregnant and she ended up dropping all of her brushes. And you can see them on the floor there on that left picture. She dropped all of her brushes. And so she bent down to pick them up. And Marie Antoinette was like, no, 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 I'll get them. And so the queen bends down and uh, picks up the brushes. And, you know, to us, that is probably not a big deal at all, but queens didn't really do that. So it was just another example of how different Marie Antoinette was and how for some, you know, she's just, that was just considered inappropriate to, to some in the aristocracy that, you know, she would, she would behave so quote unquote commonly. So, um, yeah, lots of, lots of things led to what ultimately happened to her, but um, lots of little things kind of got in people's heads to lead to the ultimate decision that uh, the monarchy had to go and then the king and queen had to go. So anyway, I just tied this little booklet up with a sari silk ribbon and then I just have a large paper clip here that um, holds it in. All right, so now we'll just keep going. Of course, that makes it pretty bulky and thick. So I'd probably take this out most of the time, especially when I'm journaling, but it does fit and doesn't cause the alligator mouth of the journal at the end. So, um, you know, that makes me happy. Here is what we lost that paper clip at the beginning, remember? <laughs> so that's where that paper clip went. This is her second son. This is Louis Charles. And so he became the Dauphin once her oldest son died. And he is the one that died um, in the tower once they were all imprisoned, probably of smallpox. Here's Marie riding her horse that I mentioned earlier she loved to do. Here's that little diamond charm. Beautiful trim. There's a little pocket on each side. I just stuck some flashcards in. Here's that pretty pink gem or charm gem that I showed you. Some really pretty pink applique there. Here she is with her two surviving children, Madame Royale and the Dauphin. And this is at her property on Versailles that really was just for her and her closest friends and confidants and her children. And here she is also with her children. And then in the last signature, we have what ultimately becomes the end, what happens to her. Um, so she was, you know, placed in a, in a, separate palace driven from Versailles. This is a portrait of that um, and the mob kind of breaking in and facing them and she stared them down and curtsied to the people and, um, you know, made them understand that she cared about them. And at the time, 
that subdued the crowd. She's a very, um, quite strong person. Here is the painting of the storming of the Bastille, which is where they housed all the weapons, which sort of, the French Revolution was kind of already beginning, but that was the, the main, you know, militaristic thing that really got it kicked off. This is the diamond necklace. There, I've been talking so long, I'm, I won't go into this. I'll probably talk about it in another Marie Antoinette walkthrough journal video. But there was this scandal um, about the diamond necklace and Marie Antoinette had nothing to do with it. Um, I'll just put it, I'll just sum it up like that. She did, she had absolutely nothing to do with it. It was all a scam by someone else, but that's not how it was portrayed in the media. The media, you know what I mean? The, <laughs> at that time, of course, there was no 24 hour news stations or anything, but, um, you know, they, they still had pamphlets and things that were printed and she was blamed for it, even though she did nothing wrong. And, uh, that had a lot to do with the public turning on her. This is a portrait or a painting rather depicting um, their fleet. So they ended up escaping their little prison where they were in Paris and they almost made it um, to the Austrian border, but they didn't. They ultimately were recaptured. Here she is in the tower. Lots of uh, heartbreaking um, portraits of them having to say goodbye to their father, the children in Marie Antoinette having to say goodbye to the king the night before he's executed. And then of course, um, her being separated from her children. And that's what this shows over here in the center spread of the last signature. So sad. I have a little fleur-de-lis um, charm right there on that piece of lace. Here's another portrait of her saying goodbye to her son. She was imprisoned for quite some time without her children um, before the end. And they, I think the separating of her with her children pretty much killed her anyway. It was just so sad. And then they ended up, it's really sad. I don't want to go into it too much because it's, it's very sad. But they ended up sort of torturing the young boy. And then at Marie Antoinette's trial, um, had him testify against her um, and say things that, that actually weren't true, um, but he was tortured to say it. Here's one of my favorite quotes that she made during her trial. She said, I was queen and you took away my crown, a wife and you killed my husband, a mother and you deprived me of my children. My blood alone remains. Take it, but do not make me suffer long. So, very powerful words. And then this is a portion of her letter, her very last letter. And this was to her ki the king's sister, Elizabeth, who was very close to Marie. They were very close friends. And um, I, I'll show you in a minute. I actually have a full copy of that letter in this journal. And I'll show you in a minute. Um, so when she was led to the, um, to the chopping block to be executed, uh, she was uh, told by a priest who was sitting next to her, that was now was the time, you know, the walk up the steps to, to her death. What he says, now is the time to show courage. And her response is, courage, I have shown it for years. Think you I shall lose it at the moment when my sufferings are to end. Here in this pocket is a tea dyed copy of her final letter that was written to the king's sister. Um, this will be in all of the journals. I just reproduced it, printed it, and tea dyed it. I'm not going to read it, as that would be here forever, but it's quite um, beautifully written and uh, sad. <laughs> so sad. Um, and then, where was that one quote? She, um, the last, th her last words, here we go. Her last words, right before she was executed, she walks up to the scaffold and accidentally steps on her executioner's foot. And she says, pardon me, sir, I meant not to do it. And those are the last words that Marie Antoinette spoke. So that is my Marie Antoinette journal. Here's a, one of the last portraits of her. This is when she's in the tower. And then Happier Times portrait here on the last inside cover. And then this little doily here, and I do have some beadwork at the bottom. You can see that there and I made a little tuck spot here with another happier times 
portrait of her. So that is my Marie Antoinette journal. So there is that. Oops, my little ink. Um, this is a charm. It just slipped off. I will put it back on. This is a little ink charm that I had in the last signature because I thought it went really well with, you know, her writing the last letter and everything like that. So I'll just reattach that when I'm done here. Then I have this little mini journal. I had found all of these other gorgeous paintings of her and I wanted to include them. So I just made this tiny little journal here. Um, it's actually not quite so tiny. It's sort of fat, but it's just one signature and it just has some lovely tea dyed pages with some beautiful um, paintings of her. This is actually a painting of her and her daughter giving uh, alms to the blind. So just kind of goes to show again how much charity work she really did do and how much she did care, even though she may have spent a little more than she should have. Of course, that was the culture, though. So which what king and queen didn't at the time, you know? Some more beautiful portraits. Again, all of these are tuck spots, and they have the title of the portrait, who did it, and if known, the date it, that they were painted. So just some extra room to journal with some beautiful portraiture in it. And that's that. And it just has a little sorry silk closure, so you just tie it up. And I think I wrapped this one twice. Yeah. And then just tie a little bow on it. And this would actually fit in one of the pockets inside the journal, but then you probably would get a gaping kind of alligator mouth because <laughs> it, it would be so full at that point. So I just sort of left it out of the journal. But if you were, you know, really wanting it all to be compact, you could store it inside the journal itself. All right. So that is it, guys. That is my history lesson and my Marie Antoinette journal with the two little mini journals inside of it. I couldn't help myself. Um, so stay tuned. I will have walkthroughs of the other uh, three large journals that I showed you as well as two smaller journals and all of those will be for sale. This one is not. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, thank you guys so much as always for stopping by and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.